Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The House of Representatives is poised to pass a massive rewrite of the U.S. tax code today that will overwhelmingly benefit corporations and the wealthiest Americans. The bill would also end the federal health insurance mandate, endangering the Affordable Care Act, while opening up drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. On Capitol Hill, hundreds of protesters flooded the offices of lawmakers Monday in civil disobedience protests. Among those arrested was Cincinnati resident Megan Anderson, who uses a wheelchair and has a degenerative neuromuscular disease. Anderson says the tax bill will lead to Medicaid cuts that could shorten her life. I am begging our, 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 the people that work for us to not kill me. I will. This disease continues to get worse. I will one day need a tracheotomy, a ventilator. Please allow me that so I can continue to laugh, continue to share tears of joys with my family, my friends, and my community. The protest came as a new analysis by the Tax Policy Institute found that by 2027, the top 1 percent would get 83 percent of the tax cut, while two-thirds of middle-class Americans would see a tax increase. The Senate's expected to vote on final passage of the bill later this week. In Washington state, a high-speed passenger train on its inaugural trip from Seattle to Portland derailed on Monday, leaving at least three people dead and injuring 70 others, 10 of them seriously. Federal investigators say the Amtrak train was traveling at 80 miles per hour when it barreled off the tracks in a 30-mile-per-hour zone. The accident sent some of the train's cars tumbling onto a major highway below, with others left dangling on a steep embankment. This is West Pierce Fire Chief Jay Summerlin. It took a lot of extrication tools. It wasn't easy for the firefighters to get through. They were using jaws of life. They were using air chisels and different forms of saws to be able to get into some of the crushed cars to get access to people and get them out. Uh, some of the rescues were done by ladders. Uh, it was just a difficult place to be. The National Transportation Safety Board says it's too early to tell what caused the derailment and that its investigators would spend a week or more scouring the wreckage for clues. Ahead of the crash, the mayor of the city of Lakewood raised safety concerns about the new rail line, predicting earlier this month it could lead to multiple deaths. The train was not utilizing positive train control, a technology mandated by Congress but rarely operating in Amtrak trains, which could have prevented the crash. After the crash, President Trump tweeted, quote, the train accident that just occurred in DuPont, Washington, shows more than ever why our soon-to-be-submitted infrastructure plan must be approved quickly, $7 trillion spent in the Middle East while our roads, bridges, tunnels, railways and more crumble, not for long, Trump tweeted. In fact, President Trump's proposed budget for next year would cut federal funds for the Federal Transit Administration's capital investment program, including Amtrak projects. President Trump outlined his blueprint for national security Monday in a speech trumpeting U.S. military might, but failing to mention the threat posed by climate change. Trump's national security strategy calls for the U.S. to respond with nuclear weapons to non-nuclear attacks. Trump said he was seeking to put America first by expanding the U.S. military to counter the expanding power of Russia and China. The United States vetoed a United Nations Security Council resolution Monday calling on the Trump administration to withdraw its declaration that Jerusalem's Israel's capital. The vote was 14 to 1, with U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley exercising the lone veto. The Israeli military seized control of East Jerusalem since 1967 has occupied the territory ever since. Palestinians, however, have long seen East Jerusalem as the capital of their future country, and both the U.N. Security Council and the General Assembly have passed dozens of resolutions calling for Israel to end its occupation of East Jerusalem. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence has delayed a planned trip to the Middle East, saying he'll remain in Washington, D.C., to preside over passage of the Republican tax bill this week. Pence's announcement came after Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas canceled a planned meeting with Pence in Bethlehem and called for an angry demonstration to protest President Trump's decision on Jerusalem. Pence now says he'll visit Egypt and Israel in February. Honduran Vice President Ricardo Alvarez has rejected calls for a revote in the November 26 election after incumbent President Juan Orlando Hernandez was declared the winner by the government-controlled election tribunal. 
Este es un país autónomo, este es un país soberano. This is an autonomous and sovereign country. This is a country that is not going to do what anybody from an international organization tells it to do. I will say it again, the only other election this country will have, the next one, is on the last Sunday of November 2021. There's not another election. Vice President Alvarez's comments came despite charges of voter fraud by opposition candidate Salvador Nasrallah and a call for a new vote by the Organization of American States, which said the first election was so filled with irregularities that it's impossible to declare a winner. Protests continue to rage across Honduras. In the capital, Tegucigalpa, Monday, police fired tear gas and pepper spray at protesters who burned tires and set up barricades in the streets. In Vienna, Austria, thousands of people rallied Monday to protest Austria's newly ceded far-right government, which includes members of the anti-immigrant Freedom Party, which was founded after World War II by former members of the Nazi Party. Outside the presidential palace, police used water cannons to turn back protesters who chanted, refugees welcome and Nazis out. This is protester Femme Fiscal. I believe Austria should remain open. Clearly, we're a small country and can't take everyone in, but we should also avoid producing general suspects and being generally hostile to migrants and refugees. Puerto Rico's government said Monday it's launching an official review of the death count from Hurricane Maria. The storm devastated the island September 20th, and since then, the government's put the official death toll at 64. But a number of investigations have revealed nearly a thousand more people died. This comes as a Center for Investigative Journalism in Puerto Rico reported this week that close to three months since the storm, 45 people are still listed as missing, and efforts by Puerto Rico's police to locate them have been minimal or almost non-existent. After headlines, we'll go to San Juan to speak with Puerto Rican journalist Amaya Sosa. One of President Trump's nominees to a lifetime appointment on the U.S. District Court in Washington has withdrawn from consideration after widely circulated video showed he was unable to answer basic questions about the law and had never tried a case in court. This is Louisiana Republican Senator John Kennedy questioning Peterson at a Senate Judiciary confirmation hearing last week. Have you ever tried a jury trial? I have not. Civil? No. Criminal? No. Bench? No. State or federal court? I have not. Matthew Peterson's withdrawal came after the Judiciary Committee rejected two of President Trump's other nominees this month. Texas lawyer Jeff Mateer, who has called transgender children evidence of Satan's plan, and blogger Brett Talley, who was rated unanimously unqualified for a judicial post by the American Bar Association. In California, federal appeals court judge Alex Kaczynski said Monday he'll retire after at least 15 women accused him of sexual harassment, unwanted hugging, kissing or groping, an incident spanning decades. Judge Kaczynski was appointed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals by President Ronald Reagan in 1985. Current and former women contributors at the Fox News Channel are speaking out against sexual abuse in the workplace after media mogul and Fox News owner Rupert Murdoch dismissed widespread charges of rape, sexual assault and harassment at the network as nonsense. Murdoch made the comments in an interview on the Sky News Channel, which he founded. How harmful has the whole raft of allegations about sexual harassment at Fox News being for the business. Has oh, that's all nonsense. Uh, there was a problem uh, with our chief executive, um, sort of, uh, uh, over the years, but isolated instance, as soon as we investigated, he was out of the place in hours, well, three or four days. Um, and there's been nothing else since then. In fact, it took Fox News three weeks to force out its former chief executive, Roger Ailes, after former host Gretchen Carlson filed suit against Ailes and left with a $40 million settlement. Ailes was also accused of sexual harassment by more than 20 other women. Rupert Murdoch also failed to mention the case of former news host Bill O'Reilly, who settled sexual harassment claims with at least six women, paying out $32 million to settle one suit alone, before he was eventually fired last April. Fox News host Eric Bowling was suspended by the network in August over accusations he texted unwanted photos of his genitals to female co-workers. And former TV commentator Scotty Nell Hughes says in a lawsuit she was raped by longtime anchor Charles Payne and then coerced 
coerced into maintaining a sexual relationship with him. And feminist activist Tarana Burke, the founder of the Me Too movement, will preside over the ceremonial countdown ringing in 2018 on New Year's Eve in New York City's Times Square. Ten years ago, Tarana Burke began Me Too as a grassroots movement to aid sexual assault survivors in underprivileged communities where rape crisis centers and sexual assault workers were not going. In a statement, the president of the Times Square Alliance said, quote, Tarana Burke's courage and foresight have changed the world this year, and we hope forever. To see our interviews with Tarana Burke, you can go to democracynow.org. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.